Karaniwa na makakaranas tayo na mayroong sumasakabilang buhay. At pag tayo nakikipaglamay, nakikipaglibing, naiisip natin ng ganun mga bagay, maraming mga guni-guni na kumikilos sa ating isip at napag-iisip natin yung daigdig ng mga nando na sa kabilang buhay. Ano kaya ang koneksyon ng kabilang daigdig? Ang daigdig ng mga yumao na at sumama na sa Panginoon sa daigdig natin ngayon. Yan po ang sisikapin nating tunghayan sa ating pag-aaral na pinamagatang A Ghost Who Could Not Return. Ang isang uh, espiritu o multo sa tawag ng iba na hindi makabalik dito sa lupa. Salamat Panginoon dahil kayo matapat at salamat dahil binibigyan nyo kami ng napakaraming liwanag upang maintindihan namin hindi lang ang buhay dito sa lupa kundi maging yung sa kabila. Patawarin niyo po kami sa aming mga kasalanan, linisin sa aming mga karumihan at ngayon nihanda niyo ang aming puso na maturuan, maituwid, mapagpala niyo. We ask you Father to cleanse us and we ask you Lord to bless your people. Use your servant as an instrument of your blessing but we want you to be our speaker. Kayo Panginoon ang maging tagapangaral at awa maakay niyo kami sa higit lalong kaliwanagan, kabutihan at kabanalan. Dalangin namin ang lahat ng itong may pasalamat sa pangalan ng iyong anak na si Jesus na aming Panginoon, kaibigan at tagapagligtas. Amen. What are the lessons that we could learn from a ghost who could not return? Luke 16, 19-31, we will be reading from the contemporary English version. There was once a rich man who wore expensive clothes and every day ate the best food. But a poor beggar named Lazarus was brought to the gate of the rich man's house. He was happy just to eat the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. His body was covered with sores and dogs kept coming up to lick them. Dalawang lalaki, dalawang uri ng buhay. Magkaibang magkaiba. Yung mayaman ay napakasarap ng buhay at yun namang mahirap ay nagtitsaga lamang sa mga mumunting mga piraso ng pagkaing na lalaglag mula sa mesa ng mayaman at ganun ang kanilang malaking agwat ng buhay. Verses 22 to 23, The poor man died and angels took him to the place of honor next to Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. He went to hell and was suffering terribly. Hell here is uh, Gehenna or Hades, which is not equivalent to what we think of hell, na may mga masasamang espiritu, na may mga malalaking tinidor at niluluto-luto yung mga tao doon. That was already an addition, a cultural addition to the meaning of Hades, which is meant in the New Testament times as the world of the dead. So burial and suffering was not mentioned in the case of Lazarus. Sinabi lang siya ay namatay at dinala siya ng mga uh, anghel sa tabi ni Abraham. So namatay yung katawan, definitely hindi yun ang dinala. Pagkatapos ay siya ay napasama sa piling ni Abraham at yung mayaman daw namatay at inilibing. Pansinin ninyo na hindi sinabing inilibing yung uh, mahirap na si Lazarus. Bagamat yung katawan niya, definitely inilibing yun. Pero yung salitang libing, ini-apply lang doon sa isang tao, yung mayaman nga, na dinala daw sa kaparusahan. The rich man was buried, went to hell according to this version, and was suffering. The central theme here is not that poor people will go to paradise beside Abraham, and that rich people will go to hell or to suffering. But what we are being taught here, brothers and sisters, is the issue of balancing. The rich man had a very good life and apparently he did not have any space in his heart to be mindful of others. He was not a good giver. He did not give provisions to those who were poor, even those who were at his doorstep. So this, rich, this poor man, Lazarus, had to make do with scraps that fell from his table, although apparently he had a lot of surplus to give away if he wanted to. So nagkaroon ng pagbabalanse. This man who was self-indulgent and had all the good time only for himself on earth, now is on the other side of the fence in the next life. And the poor man, apparently, who never had anything, 
but probably was very, very giving, as we can see from the context of the story, loving. Then in the next life, he was given what he never had. There was a kind of balancing. This is not a class struggle, as many communists would insist. Kundi yung kabutihang loob at kakulangan ng pagkalinga sa kapwa na ngayon ay gagantimpalaan o paparusahan sa kabilang buhay. Kung nagkataon na yung mayaman dito sa lupa ay palabigay pa, palatulong at marunong di magsakripisyo para sa kapwa, walang duda na sa kabilang buhay, siya naman yung bibigyan pa rin kasi palabigay siya. Pero dahil sa inamarahil ay maramot, napagkait, therefore balancing was in order. The poor man, kahit siya mahirap dito sa lupa, kung wala siyang ginawa kundi manghingi ng manghingi, mangabala ng mangabala, dahil lang siya'y mahirap at hindi siya marunong magbigay ng anuman, hindi man kayamanan, pero siguro ay oras, pagmamahal, pag-ibig, serbisyo, eh babawian pa rin siya kahit sa kabilang buhay. The economic status of people has nothing to do with their eternal situation. Luke 16, 23 to 24. When he looked up and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side, he said to Abraham, Have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip his finger in water and touch my tongue. I'm suffering terribly in this fire. Nabaligtad. Kung nung araw, naiingit-ingit siguro, in a, not in a non-negative way, itong si Lazarus dahil sa sarap ng buhay ng mayaman, ngayon ito namang si mayaman ang nakatingin doon sa kabila. At sabi niya, sana naman, kahit na lamang isang patak na tubig, idampi ni Lazarus sa aking dila dahil hirap na hirap ako dito dahil may apoy palang naglalagablab sa kanyang paligid. What main lesson do we learn from the ghost who could not return and his story that death could bring suffering or rest and comfort? Nagbabalanse. So you want to be rested in the next life? Do your work and your suffering here in this life now. A life that is given to charity, to loving others, to providing for other people's needs, promises a reversal in the next life. Dahil ang Diyos ay Diyos ng balanse. God balances everything. So kumisan may mga kilala tayo, mga mahal sa buhay, kapitbahay na alam nating Walang ginawa buong buhay nila to always be giving and giving and giving. We are very sure that God's goodness will now reverse that situation and give rest to the weary. Give back to those who have always been giving during their earthly life. Nababalanse. Eh. Kaya nga kumisan, bagamat isinasama ng ating loob, ikinulungkot natin na may mga mahal tayo sa buhay na yumayao na, sumasakabilang buhay, pero ang hindi natin laging nakikita at na-appreciate, eh sila'y napupunta sa pahinga dahil siguro pagod na pagod sila sa buhay na ito. Siguro ang dami-dami na nilang stress, dalahin, mga bigat sa buhay, na sa kagandahang loob ng Panginoon, bagamat ayaw natin sila munang ibigay, eh kinuha na. Now balancing is being enjoyed by such people. But same stories could also become warnings for those people who are indulgent. Yung walang inisip kundi ang sarili kundi humingi, kumuha, magpasasa, there will be a correction, there will be balancing. Kaya kung gusto nyo yung dagdagan, yung mga chances, the possibilities of you being rested in the next life, do all your good works here and now. God is God of justice and God is God of balance. At mag-ingat tayo and beware if you are living your life in selfish indulgence because you will become the casualty of the correction that will eventually, naturally, and surely come. So sabi niya, pwede po bang ipasawsaw niyo kay Lazarus ang daliri niya at basain man lang kahit konti ang aking dila. Dahil ang hirap-hirap ng nararamdaman kong init. Luke 16, 25 to 26. Abraham answered, My friend, remember that while you lived, you had everything good and Lazarus had everything bad. Now he is happy, and you are in pain. And besides, there is a deep ditch between us, and no one from either side can cross over. Hindi daw pwede, hindi pwedeng lumipat si Lazarus 
para bigyan kahit konting ginhawa itong mayamang lalaki na namatay na. And take note of the description of Lazarus. Now he is happy. No doubt the people who loved Lazarus were grieving. They were mourning because of Lazarus's passing. But pa Lazarus was not part of that grieving and mourning process because now he was happy. At ganun din ang kalagayan ng mga anak ng Diyos nasa Panginoon na namuhay ng pag-ibig, paglilingkod, pagbibigay. Kung sila ibawiin ng Panginoon, now they are happy. Probably we are sad, but not them. At dapat natin ma-appreciate yung kabutihan ng Diyos ako minsan because of our limited and selfish notions we don't want to give people up to God. But God knows in His infinite wisdom what is best for us, for each one of us. And we take great comfort and we get comforted when we surrender ourselves to that divine will. Another lesson that we can learn from this story, that there is distinction among the dead, those that suffer and those that rest. Not the kind of distinction that we see now, that people who are rich have very, very big mausoleums and beautiful tombs, and those who die economically poor actually have to go through a very, very humble burial or probably take a very humble place in a cemetery. But that is not the distinction that heaven sees. God sees a distinction between those who suffer and those at rest. Merong nagdurusa pagkamatay at meron namang napapahinga. At saan yun nakabatay? That is based on their distinction while alive on earth. Hindi naman po mahirap isipin kung anong pupuntahan nyo pa sa kabilang buhay, babaligtarin mo yung kalagayan mo ngayon. Kung makasarili ka, nag-enjoy ka at nagpasasa ka, ano mangyayari sa'yo? E di may balancing, ikaw naman yung magdurusa. Pero kung ikaw'y nagbuhay sa pag-ibig, sa pagbibigay sa kapwa, sa pagtitiis, kahit ka pa mayaman, pwedeng gawin nyo ng mayaman, kahit ka pa sikat, meron ka rin mga sacrifices, you know that even that will be balanced and that your having been wealthy or powerful or famous will not be taken against you if despite or because of your celebrity, you live a good life. Good to others, meaning. Kaya mahalaga na tayo maibigin. Hindi ka man inibig, iibigan ka ng Panginoon, babalansihin ka niya. Parang si Maricel Soriano, sabi niya, mahalin mo ako para sa lahat ng hindi nagmahal sa akin. Ganon ang gagawin ng Panginoon sa atin. Kung tayo maibigin, mapagmahal, mapagbigay, wala man lang nagsukli, wala man lang gumanti, ang Panginoon na magbabalansin nun. Walang mabuting gawa ang nasasayang kahit kailan. Lagi yan na nakalista, tinutuos, binabalanse ng langit. Another great lesson, that the gap and distance between the two destinations cannot be bridged. Wala nang lipatan kung natapos na ang buhay dito sa lupa. In eternity, it cannot be bridged. So you want to bridge it? Do it now. Pwede pa magpalipat-lipat ngayon. Mula sa makasarili, pwede ka maging mabuti. Mula sa mayabang, pwede ka pang maging mapagpakumbaba. Pwede pa tayong lumipat ng sitwasyon habang nabubuhay dito sa mundo. Pero pag kinamatayan mo, kung ano yung kamatayan mong lugar, dun ka na. What people do while alive in the body, bears on their final and eternal destiny. Kaya hindi natin ipinaglulok sa ang pagpano ng mga mabubuting tao na nasa Panginoon. Nanalig sa Panginoon, nagpaligtas sa Kanya, tapos mabuti pa ang buhay. Mabuti in the sense na mabuti para sa kapwa. Matulungin. Pagpapala siya sa marami, ang Kanyang pagpanaw ay kapahingahan para sa Kanya. Hindi kalugihan. Ang anumang ginagawa natin dito sa lupa, nakalista sa langit at may katumbas na parusa o gantimpala. Hindi dapat nililimot itong mga basic truths na to. Sometimes, modern life gives you so much choices. 
trying to order coffee in a restaurant, and there's so many choices. Order tea, order soda, order water, mineral ba, alkaline ba, di ba? Uh, ang dami-daming choices. Pero ang totoo sa buhay, simple lang ang choices. Good or bad, yun lang. Righteous or unrighteous, godly or ungodly. And do not be confused. Because the choices are clear and simple. Luke 16, 27 to 31. But the rich man said, Abraham, then please send Lazarus to my father's home. Let him warn my five brothers so they won't come to this horrible place. Abraham answered, Your brothers can read what Moses and the prophets wrote. They should pay attention to that. Then the rich man said, No, that's not enough. If only someone from the dead would go to them, they would listen and turn to God. So Abraham said, If they won't pay attention to Moses and the prophets, they won't listen even to someone who comes back from the dead. Eh kung hindi po pwede na lumipat dito itong si Lazarus para bigyan ako ng konting ginhawa, palipatin nyo naman dun sa daigdig ng mga buhay pa. Pauwiin nyo sa lupa. Papuntahin nyo sa bahay ng aking ama dahil may lima pa. Akong kapatid, nakatulad ko rin. At siguradong pag hindi sila nagbagong loob, pag namatay sila, dito rin sila hahantong ayokong mangyari sa kanila ang nararanasan ko ngayon. So please, pauwiin niyo po sa lupa si Lazarus at bigyan ng babala, mga kapatid, kung totoo ang chismis, may hell. Kasabi ni Abraham, hindi pwede. Ang dami-dami nang nakasulat, si Dulat ni Moses sa mga propeta, lahat ng kailangan malaman ng tao para makilala ang Diyos, magbalik loob sa Diyos, at maiwasang mapunta dyan sa kapahamakan pag namatay ang katawan, alam na ng lahat ng tao yan. Dapat nilang basahin, hindi na kailangan magpauwi pa na isang multo para lamang turuan ang kabutihan at magbalik loob sa Diyos sa mga tao dahil lahat yan nakasulat na. So hindi pwede. That's why Lazarus was the ghost who could not return. Abraham said, no, 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 no. Everything that man needs to know about God, the way that leads to God, is already written about. All they have to do is refer to scriptures. And if they won't read the scriptures, it's pointless even to send someone back from the dead. They still won't listen. So this rich man was very loving to his brothers that they were afraid that they would get to the same destination if they did not have a dramatic change of direction in their spirituality. But of course, the request was denied. That's why Lazarus was the ghost who could not return. What do we learn from here? At least in this case, the dead are not allowed to return to earthly dimensions even on saving missions. Sometimes the dead are allowed. Samuel the prophet returned after death. But even Samuel was called to return to earth. He did not do a saving mission. In fact, what he did was to further condemn King Saul. Alam niyo ang kwento, King Saul was at war and he was definitely going to lose. He needed guidance. God would not answer him. So he went to a woman who could call spirits and requested the woman to call Samuel from the dead so he could consult with Samuel. Well, Samuel dutifully returned. So in this case, the dead returned. But Saul was not able to get what he wanted. He did not get salvation. He did not get uh, an advice. But so Samuel only reaffirmed what had already been concluded, that Saul would lose the war. And then Samuel even said, tomorrow you will die, you will join me. So that is another case when the dead was able to return. But it was still useless to those people who wanted that return to happen. So better leave the dead alone. Habang nabubuhay ka, gawin mo ang dapat mong gawin, alamin mo ang dapat mong alamin, basahin mo ang dapat mong basahin. At kung kilala mo ang Panginoon, alam mo ang mga kasulatan ni Moses at ang mga propeta, ituro mo na nang ituro sa lahat ng taong mahal mo, maski hindi mo kilala. Kasi darating ang panahon, pag nasa kabilang buhay ka na at napatunayan mong totoo pala ang lahat ng nakasulat, wala ka na magagawa para patotohanan yan sa mga nabubuhay pa dito sa lupa. Ngayon na ang panahon. So another lesson from this story is while alive on earth, 
people are to know God through the law, through the prophets, through scripture, and through the law that is written in men's hearts, even without and beyond the written law. Kailangan bigyan ng pansin ng ating espiritu. Kailangan itong buhayin bago humiwalay sa katawan at humarap sa Panginoon. Why are we to know God? Not only to be saved in the next life, although that is very important, but also to be spurred into faith and good deeds. Kinikilala mo ang Panginoon para sa pagkakakilala mo sa Kanya ang maging bunga ay kabanalan, kabutihang loob, at mga gawang mabubuti. Obviously, have to know God so that we will be well on the way to rest and peace when we die. This is the time that God must be known. This is the time that God must be shared, not when you're already in the next world. Kaya mga kapatid, huwag tayong magsayang ng panahon. Huwag tayong magpatumpik-tumpik. Kailangan alamin ang lapat ang lahat ang alamin. Sundin ang lapat, dapat sundin. Gawin ang lahat ng dapat gawin. And when God calls you, die. Wala kang pagsisisi. Wala kang sama ng loob. Dahil sa hinabahaba ng panahon na ibinigay sa'yo ng Panginoon, nagamit mo. You know, you become busy. When you're a child, you're busy and you want to play. When you become a teenager or a young man or a young woman, you become busy with school probably or romance and things like that. Then normally, many people get married and they become busy raising families. And then, they become busy growing old, taking care of the parts of their body that no longer are healthy as they were. Many people get fooled by the enemy into not giving God time in their lives. Hindi pwede na ang Panginoon ay paglingkuran, sundin, paglang may oras, paglang convenient, paglang maganda ang panahon, paglang malusog, paglang may pera. Bawat tik-tak ng orasan. Dapat tayo papabanal ng papabanal, palapit ng palapit sa Diyos, lingkod ng lingkod, kasi limitado ang tik-tak na yan. May bilang kailangan sulitin. Time here on earth, in this life, is very finite, very limited, very short. The Bible says, what is life? What are you? You're just a mist. Here today, gone the next second. So we cannot be too careless and too relaxed to the point that we miss laying up for ourselves treasures in heaven while we are here on earth. Every day, 24 hours is long enough for you to maximize your pleasure, to minimize your pain, and to do your maximum good every day. Dapat araw-araw meron kang pahinga kasi kailangan niya ng katawan. Meron kang nilalasap na kabutihan ng Diyos. Araw-araw meron kang ginagawang mabuti para sa kapwa, para sa Diyos, para sa planeta. At araw-araw, dinadagdagan mo ang iyong kabanalan para bawiin man ng Diyos ang buhay mo sa araw na yon, wala kang dapat pagsisihan. And we must also allow our loved ones and set them free so that they could have this complete ingredient of life even in an hour or in a day. To enjoy life's pleasures that God would like us to enjoy, to do the good that we are assigned to do, and to be as godly as possible, to minimize the pain of others and our pain. And then when you die, you would have lived a full life, even though it's just a short life, numerically speaking. Pag ang buhay mo ay puno ng paglilingkod sa kapwa, pagmamahal, pag-ibig, pagtuwid sa ating mga kalikuan, pagpapakabanal, maiksi man sa bilang ng taon, mahaba yun sa Diyos. Knowing the law and the prophets, knowing God, religion and spirituality are all meant to make people righteous and do good. It's not enough that you're a member of a church. It's not enough that you have a statement of faith. It's not enough that you have a certain set of spiritual values. 
What's important is that all of these faith and values and religious affiliations translate into goodness, into good deeds, and into personal holiness. Maraming religyoso, hindi espiritual. Maraming mga tao, umaaten ng church, pero hindi magaganda o gali. Walang mga magagandang panglilingkod sa Diyos. Ang sinusukat, gawa. Matapos mong tanggapin ang Panginoon at nanalig, ang susukatin na gawa. 2 Corinthians 5.10 After all, Christ will judge each of us for the good or the bad that we do while living in these bodies. Paano daw tayo susukatin? Matapos sukating nanalig ka ba sa Panginoon? Sumamba ka ba sa Kanya? Tinanggap po ba siya? Tapos nun ang sukatan na, eh ngayon, anong naging talab sa iyo ng pananalig mo? Anong napala ng sangkatauhan at ng langit na naging kristyano ka? Okay, you believe. You memorize verses. You attend church. But what good have you done because of this belief? What good deeds, what fruits of righteousness became the result of knowing God? Life is a testing ground. The final rewards and punishments are in the next. Don't be too attached to this life. Well, we should love and appreciate life because God gave it. Well, we must promote life and make it as comfortable as possible, as fruitful, as holy. The important thing is not to forget that we are just pilgrims. We are just passing through earth. We are not of this world. We are of the next. Hindi nililimot, hindi tinatanggal sa schedule, hindi pinupwera sa budget, hindi pinupwera sa mga priorities ang paggawa ng mabuti. Kasi yan ang sukatan. Sa kahuli-hulihang paghuhukom, kung saan ang lahat ng namatay ay haharap sa Panginoon. Revelation 20.12 Anong uungkatin, anong aalamin, anong bibigyan ng pansin? I saw all the dead people standing in front of that throne. Every one of them was there, no matter who they had once been. Several books were opened. And then the Book of Life was opened. The dead were judged by what those books said they had done. This grand reunion of all humanity, all people that live in all times and places, will be gathered before the throne of the Lord. And you know, it's eternity. You have all the time. Walang nagmamadali. At binuksan daw ang mga aklat, mga talaan, kung saan sa ilalim ng pangalan ng bawat tao, nakalista ang lahat ng ginawa niya dito sa mundo, masamaman o mabuti. At siya ay hinusgahan ayon sa mga nakatala. Ganon pala. Nakalista lahat. Walang nawawaglit. Well, the good that you do will not always be appreciated by everybody. They may not even be known. Heaven knows and heaven keeps a record. A record that keeps growing by the minute, by the second. Even while you sit there, something is being written about what you're doing and what you're thinking of. Ang lahat ay ibubunyag ng liwanag ng panahon. Pati mga kaliit-liitan at kalalim-lalimang lihim ng bawat tao ay ibubunyag ng mga talaan na ito. Kung kayo man ay nagdaramdam na hindi kayo lagi nakikilala, nare-recognize, ito ang araw ng recognition. Darating, tiyak. Ngayon, kung meron naman sa inyo nagpalusot, akala nyo nakalusot na ang mga ginagawa natin mga mali, darating ang panahon, tatapunan ng spotlight ang page kung saan nakalisahin yung pangalan at mabubunyag ang lahat. Ano ang gusto niyong masulat ng masulat doon sa listahan na yun? While daily life might not always focus the spotlight on your good deeds, 
Although you are able to hide bad deeds in darkness, there will be a definite time when all our deeds will be revealed, even our deepest secrets. Hindi ba kasarap-sarap na ang mabubunyag yung mga kabutihan mong hindi nalaman ng iba? Mga lihim mong mga charities, mga lihim mong paggawa ng mabuti? Huwag ipagnamdam kung hindi kayo laging nare-recognize. Tao naman hindi yan ang magbibigay sa inyo ng premyo o parusa, ang Diyos. At walang lingid sa Kanya. So what's important before you die is to know God while alive in the body. And don't do what is bad. It is so simple, but it is so powerfully true. Don't do what is bad. Do good, always. Why? It is always possible to do good. Whenever it is possible to do wrong, it is equally possible to do right. Pag may nagawa kayong tama, kapatid, kasi pinili nyo gawin ng tama, pero pwede nyo rin piliin yung mali. Pinili nyo yung tama. Congratulations. Pag meron tayong ginawang mali, sinabing mali, iniarting mali, pinili nyo yun. Imbes na gawin yung mabuti, yung tama, yung kaibig-ibig, sorry, nakalista yon. Kailangan mabuhay tayo with eternity consciousness na lahat ng ginagawa, sinasabi, iniisip, may record. Now, we are probably better equipped to understand the way heaven would record all this. With our limited, as it is, limited knowledge of computers, we know it's possible. With our very limited technology of satellites, we know that it's possible to see all parts of the world anytime, up close, or extremely up close. Pwede. And yet, our technology today, though we probably celebrate it's being modern and advanced, is nothing compared to the technology of heaven. Heaven knows what's happening in the innermost parts of our little cells inside our body. And heaven knows what is happening out there in the Milky Way, in the many galaxies, because God is spaceless. God fills heaven and earth with His presence, with His glory. So what, can, what secret can we keep? Ang matatalinong tao, binabantayan ang sarili lagi. Hindi kayo umaasang bantayan ng kapwa. Kasi kung kapwa lang ang babantay, kung isang nalilingat, makakalusot ka. Mga anak, kung mga magulang nyo lang nakabantay sa inyo, di ba ang daming beses nyo kayang-kayang linlangin ang mga magulang nyo? Kahit nga mga asawa na nakabantay ang misis, nakakasalisi pa rin kung iibigin. Pero hindi tayo pwede makalusot sa langit. Hindi lang satellite. Hindi lang microscope. Implanted in our every cell, in our brain, the consciousness of God about what we do. And there's a record. Lazarus was the ghost who could not return. You are not Lazarus because you are alive. You are the living one who can do good now. Even if Lazarus wanted to do good, to return to earth and preach, he couldn't. He was not allowed. But you are free now. So what do you do with that freedom? What do you do with that facility, that ability? You are the living one who can teach others about God now. And yet time will come and you will face God and the records will be opened and they will say, Huh? Huh? Tatlo lang ang nadala mo sa Panginoon sa hinaba-haba ng buhay mo? Sa dinami-rami ng pelikula mong napanood? Sa dinami-rami ng swimming na ginawa mo, pagtulog? Sa dinami-rami ng inubos mong oras ang pagpapapedicure, pagpamamanicure? Tatlo? Eh mabuti kung tatlo, eh kung wala. Be changed by the renewing of your mind. We've got to change our attitude about time. Time is not only for pleasure, for vacation, for work, to make savings, to have fun, even to work. Time is for bringing people to the feet of God. Time 
is for our spiritual trees to bear the fruit of the Spirit. Dapat habang dumadaan ang panahon, lalo ka nagiging mabait, mabuti, nadadagdag ang iyong pasensya at pagtitsaga, lalo kang sumisipag. Whatever ministry you do keeps getting better and better and better. Why? Because you have time. What do you do with time? It is so sad when you have reached a high level of service, a high level of spirituality, and then now you are in a very low level because the Bible says, look at how you have fallen. Look at the gap between your highest performance and your performance now and see how much you have fallen. Parang graph. The graph of our spirituality must keep rising and rising and rising because we are supposed to change from glory to glory. And that is possible because with Christ, nothing is impossible. We lose because we choose to lose. We become weak because we choose to be weak. It's a choice. And then we are conscious that all of these choices are recorded. And all the events that these choices result in are going to be opened, discussed, and we're going to be measured by these things. We become more responsible. Hindi tayo nag ng panahon. Make use of time. Don't waste time. Your time is very limited. How long will you live on earth? 100, 110, 90, 80, 40, 30? Nobody knows. All the more that we should be on our feet. Watching what we do because the days are evil. Be good. Do good. Especially in bringing people to God. Sabi sa Psalm 90 verse 12, Teach us to use wisely all the time that we have. The rich man had all the time to do good. The rich man had all the time to teach his brothers. To get himself taught. Alam nyo, mas may pera ang tao, mas mayaman, mas may kapangyarihan, mas kontrol niya oras niya. Hindi ko tulad ng napakarami sa ating kapwa, mahirap ng oras natin, pag-aari natin mga amo. Pero kahit pa nga ganun, may oras pa rin tayong kilalani ng Diyos, sumamba, habang nagtatrabaho, kahit habang namamasukan. Lalo na kung ikaw ay amo, kung ikaw ay may pera, kung ikaw ay may kapangyarihan, mas madali sa iyo to arrange events where the Lord will be known by people, where the law and the prophets will be taught to people. But what do you do with your time? What do you do with treasure? What do you do with your talent? Don't forget that there's going to be a day of reckoning, a day of judgment, and a day also of recognition, a day of rewards. Lazarus could not return as a ghost. We are privileged to be here in this dimension, in earthly life. Don't waste time. Do what must be done. And if your loved ones had gone ahead of us, if they had known the Lord, accepted the Lord, and they have lived a life of service of their family to fellow men, don't weep for them. Because according to Abraham, they are now happy and rested. Ama namin sa langit. Patuloy mo kaming turuan upang lalo namin maunawa ang buhay at kamatayan, ang hiwaga nito. Continue to reveal to us the wonder and the mystery of life and even of death. So that in any case, any time, anywhere, O oh God, we will be ready to meet you and there will be no regrets. Teach us to number our days so that we may live rightly. So that we may give you importance and priority. Ituro mo sa amin na habang nilalasap ang mga sarap ng buhay, huwag kalilimutan ang paglilingkod sa iyo sa aming kapwa at ang pagiging mabuti at banal sa aming kalooban. Mga kapatid, pagbulay-bulayan natin ang matandang kwento na itong alam na natin noon pa. Hanapan ang mga bagong kahulugan sa buhay natin. As we ponder again the story of Lazarus and this rich man, let God minister to you in a very personal way so that you may learn from the stories of these two men who lived very different lives but both had to face God. Dear God, may you teach us further. As we bow before you and remain silent, let your still voice steady us, teach us, comfort us, and guide us. Correct us, Lord, and encourage us. Magbulay-bulay tayo. 
at patuloy na dinggin ang leksyon na ibinibigay ng kasaysayang ito.